What is up guys? Welcome to the Computer Information Highway for your Java programming tutorial number 19. And here we're actually going to be starting a new project. We're going to be creating a sort of like a GPA calculator. It's going to average out our it's going to average out our GPA for our class. We're going to be basing this on an A through F scale and we're going to be yeah, we're going to be calculating our GPA. So we're going to be introducing some new concepts in this. If you follow along, this is going to make understanding this really easy, and we shouldn't have any problems. So let's get started. The first thing that we're probably going to want to do is we're going to want to print a message out to the screen. Let's just say, uh, well, I guess one of the first questions we would ask is how m how many classes do we have? So how many classes are we? averaging. Alright, so if we're going to be asking a question and we're going to be looking for input, you probably already realize that we're going to need, we're going to need a scanner object. So we're going to use scanner in equals new scanner system. I wish I could type today. Scanner in, yeah, system dot in, alt enter, enter, and so we got system in. So let's get our input. We're going to want to create a, we're, we're probably going to want to create a variable to store this so we can use this in other places. So let's just say uh, int class count equals in dot next in, right? So that will keep that will keep a tally of our class count and then now it's now now what we're going to do is we want to get all of the we want to get all of the information um, from it and in order to do that I think it's probably best if we create a new function so we've got public static void get um, we want to get classes yeah. Right. Cool. So we have this new function get classes, and what we want this to do is we're going to be collecting all of our all of our classes. We're we're, we're going to get all of the grades for our classes. So then we need to find a way to store this, and we want to be able to use this later on. So what can we do with this? <coughs> so if we have, so the first thing I guess we should ask is. So we want to print something out to the screen. We want to print out uh, what what is the grade what what grade do you have in your class? And we'll base this off of an A through F scale. So what grade do you have in your classes? A through enough. So now this is this is where we're going to be introducing a new concept for you. There, a new concept to you. We probably I don't think we have talked about arrays yet. And looking through my past tutorials right now, it doesn't look like that we have. So array an array is basically like a collection or a list of something. So we can have like a list of integers, or we could have a list of strings, or we could have a list of characters. And since we're basing this off of an A through F scales, you probably guessed it and you probably heard me say it, but we're going to be wanting to use a list of characters because we want it to be A, B, C, D, or F, depending on uh, whatever they put in. So we are going to create an array and to do and to create an array we want to create a character array so to do this we use the keyword char which is for character and then we have to uh, we have to name we have to name our variable so let's just call this grades and we, then we put these square back brackets right here and these square brackets uh, basically tell us that this is going to be an array it doesn't have, we don't know how big this array is going to be, it hasn't been uh, allocated yet, we haven't actually told 
how long this array is going to be. So we do that with the next line. We hit equals, and we have to use the keyword new in order to tell it that there's going to be an integer, like for or it's going to be a character for this for this variable. So we have to do new char, and then we have brackets here, and we have to put the we have to put the length in these uh, the length in these brackets right here, so that it knows how many how many how many items are going to be in the list, because it doesn't it doesn't just add items to a list, it has to define how much memory it's going to be taking up ahead of time. So to do that, we just type an integer in here. It could be, uh, and it would normally be like number one through six, or it would probably be six or seven, depending on this program. So we're gonna say six for now, and we're gonna put a semicolon at the end. And then, I'm only putting the six in here so it's not erroring out. I'm going to show you what what we're going to be, how we're going to be making this a little bit more dynamic, because we asked how many classes we're going to be averaging. We can just use that. We can create a parameter right here, or we can create an argument. Let's say int num classes. All right, int num classes, and then. we can just pass in this num classes right here and that will let us create the length and it will make it dynamic based off of what the user put in and having a dynamic program is probably one of the best things you can do you never want anything to be uh, hard, -coded, hard coded in if you can afford it and basically hard coding is whenever you give it like a specific length or you tell it to do something like so specific that it doesn't it, it doesn't change based off of different uh, like different scenarios like if somebody were to put in the class count in this situation we have hard coded in that the length is six and it doesn't actually matter and we're trying to avoid that we want it to be dynamic so if we have uh, this here and we include num classes right here we can go ahead and define the length of that and that will that, that that that's that's how we create our like collection or that's how we create our list. It's not an actual collection. Uh, we'll learn about collections later on. But for all intents and purposes, you can just say this is a list of characters that we're calling grades with length num classes, which is coming in from this variable up here. And oops, and we can do that by just saying get classes and pass in class count there. And that's how we'll pass that argument in. You just pass in the variable that we're using. Since it follows the right variable type, we can pass it in through here. And we can use it, and it's going to fill in the length of what this is going to be. So I'm going to actually cut this video a little bit short. I kind of just wanted to get up to the introduction of arrays and how we can, and how they're created. In the next video, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be populating this list. I'm going to be populating the array. You'll actually hear me call it an array probably from now on. Um, just get used to the terminology. You'll probably hear a lot of it. Um, and I know in some of my past videos I've made a couple mistakes on uh, some of my terminology, but I'm going to try to fix that as I come up. I'm going to go through them and I may make just a recap video where I like explain some differences between my last videos and these videos and uh, some mistakes I may have made and like how I can how you guys can understand it better that's my whole goal for this so in the next video we'll be continuing on this we'll be populating this array and we'll be doing maybe a couple more things so I'll see you guys in the next video